Federal Executive Council approves Nigeria Data Protection Bill for transmission to NAS. Vice President confess with Fulton and others in NIPSS transformation. KB State lawmaker resigns appointments. River State Governor says failure of 2020 elections will set democracy back. On business update, Southeastern Nigerians paid highest for kerosene in December 2022. On international scene, U.S. to deepen ties with African countries. On sport update, Wigan sack story after just nine matches. Hello and welcome to Standard Watch Television News Show. I'm Mugutun Mahmoud. The Federal Executive Council has approved the Nigeria Data Protection Bill. In a statement by Head Legal Enforcement and Regulations, Nigeria Data Protection Bureau Babatunde Bamigboye stated that the bill will be transmitted to the National Assembly. Mr. Babatunde disclosed that the central objective of the bill is to safeguard the fundamental rights, freedoms and the interests of data subjects in the country. He said the federal executive approved the bill by virtue of the historic approval and the bill will now be transmitted to the National Assembly as an executive bill through the office of the Honorable Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation. It could be recalled that President Mohamed Buhari approved the establishment of the Nigeria Data Protection Bureau on the 4th February 2022. The Bureau was mandated to implement the Nigerian Data Protection Regulation and to coordinate the passage of an enabling act for data protection. Vice President Yemi Osim Bajo has announced that the task for National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies is to determine how it will affect human history beginning with Nigeria. Osimbajo spokesman Laulu Akande in a statement on Thursday said the vice president met with the NIPSS board at the presidential villa Abuja. The vice president had on December 16, 2022, inaugurated the board of trustees on the NIPSS endowment fund chaired by the Sultan of Sokoto Al Hajj Saad Abu Bakr. Mr. Osimbajo harped on the need to reposition NIPSS, recalibrate its visibility, and attract significant financial backing from the private sector and other non-public sector sources. He said the consensus was that the time had come for the institute to take its place as a foremost institute along the lines of notable globally ranked think tanks. Other than that, one of the reasons why a think tank is effective is because it is a place where people think and develop ideas because ideas make the difference. According to the vice president, one of the critical things for NIPSS board is to first of all realize that the most important part of his work is that in the coming years would be really thinking and developing ideas. KB State Assembly Deputy Speaker al Haji Muhammad Usman and five other principal officers of the State House of Assembly resigned their appointments. The resignation was made known in a letter signed by the Press Secretary to the Assembly, Shehu Muhammad Yauri, and made available to newsmen in Brennan KB. The statement said 20 out of the 24 members of the assembly had signed the letter for the resignation of the principal officers. Newsmen gathered that no reason for their resignation was mentioned in the statement, other than that, through a letter dated 26 January 2023 and signed by acting clerk Suleiman Shamaki, had invited Governor Atiku Bagudu to appear before the House on January 27th in order to explain how he expended over 18.7 billion naira loan approved by the House on the 18th October 2021. The federal government has issued a warning to criminals to desist from making any attempts to break into any jail across the country. The warning was given by the Minister of Interior, Rauf Arigbisola, while speaking at the 64th Ministerial Press Briefing at the State House Abuja. The minister said there have been recent attempts, but many of them repelled and such individuals killed. Mr. Aribisola further underlined that with their captured biometrics as well as the state-of-the-art recreational facilities erected in the six geopolitical zones across the country, the chances of criminals successfully breaking into any facility have been significantly minimized. He further stated that the ministry has deported at least 70 foreign nationals for various infractions in the last two years. The minister noted that 
The majority of those deported were from the Democratic Republic of Korea, Egypt and Sri Lanka, among others. River State's Governor Nyesom Ezeonwawike has urged Nigerians not to allow the 2023 general elections to fail. The governor said allowing such failure will increase political polarization, excavate social fault lines and set Nigeria's democracy backward. Governor Wike gave the charge at the 2023 Port Harcourt International Conference, sponsored by the River State Government with the team, deepening democratic culture and institutions for sustainable development and security in Nigeria, held at Obiwali International Conference in Port Harcourt. The governor noted that barely one month away, Nigerians are hoping and praying for the 2023 general elections to herald the deepening of democratic culture, the rule of law and good governance in the country. But the opportunity to elect a new president of the federation and 30 state governors, Governor Wike insisted, should be a success because it will consolidate and strengthen the roots of democracy and the national life of Nigeria. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Femi Bajabiamila, has threatened to issue warrants of arrest against CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele if he fails to appear before the House. Mr. Bajabi Amila's threat was in response to a letter from the Central Bank intimating the House of yet another inability to honour its invitation over a bank's latest cashless policy. In a statement delivered on the floor of the House, the Speaker said he would not hesitate to invoke relevant sections of the Constitution to force the CBN's governor's appearance. The House was scheduled to proceed on a break for the election, but says it is extending it to Tuesday for the purpose of receiving the CBN governor for an interface on the raging currency swap. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission has re-arrested the former registrar of the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, Professor Adedibu Ojerinde. In a statement signed by the Commission's spokesperson, Mrs. Azuka Ogugwa disclosed that Professor Ojerinde's re-arrest followed a warrant issued by the Federal High Court Abuja. For more on the story, our correspondent Zainab Ablasi has the details. The ex registrar is expected to face a team of investigators over the new evidence uncovered in relation to his ongoing trial for the diversion of funds while he was a public officer. ICPC operatives uncovered two accounts open in the names of Trillium Learning Center Limited and Saparty International Schools Limited into which fund were diverted using fictitious names of students. The commission had on the 12th December 2022 invited the former gem registrar for questioning over the new evidence but he wrote through his solicitors requesting 14 days grace to enable him to honor the invitation mr ojerinde however refused to honor the invitation as undertaken by his counsel after the expiration of the 14 days grace on 27th december 2022 in the course of its ongoing investigation the commission on health New evidence that suggests that Ojerinde is the sole signatory to various bank accounts operated in the names of Trillium Learning Centre Limited and Saparty International School Limited. Ojerinde reportedly operated those accounts using false identity and forged documents in the names of Joshua Olakunleni Olaniro and Akambi Lamedi, respectively. He also reportedly used another false identity. Adeniyi Banji to operate a separate account in the name of Stand Out Institute Limited. Zainab Abdulwasi, you reporting for Standard Voice Television. Some residents of Katsina State on Thursday expressed anger over the narrow design policy during President Muhammadu Buhari's visit to Katsina State. The residents staged a protest at Kofar Kaura, Kofar Kwaya, and on Yahayama Dakiwe in Katsina, saying the economic policy of the government is not working. The protesters lit bonfire and threw stones and other items at some government vehicles, saying they were displeased over fuel scarcity, inflation and insecurity. However, the security personnel had dispersed the protesters with tear gas and normalcy returned. Although the police spokesperson in Katsina, SP Gambo Isa, denied the occurrence of the protest. SP Gambo said that the president was not booed at and that there was no protest at all, saying the people of Katsina state came out in mass welcomed and celebrated the arrival of the president. However, the chief of staff to the Katsina state governor, Baturi Masari, said it was in response to the high 
handedness of the security agencies against the crowd that went to welcome the president. Now on business update. The National Bureau of Statistics has revealed that southeastern Nigerians paid the highest kerosene costs in December 2022. The NBS National Household Kerosene Price Watch report, recently published by the agency, revealed that Nigerians in the southeast region paid an average of 1,203.95 naira per litre of kerosene, with the average cost of a gallon of kerosene in the region reaching 4,337.32 naira. The NBS gathered that the average retail price per litre of kerosene paid by consumers in December 2022 was 1,104.61 naira, which indicated an increase of 1.94% compared to 1,083.57 naira recorded in November 2022. However, on a year-on-year -year basis, the average retail price per litre of kerosene rose by 136.4%, from 467.97 Naira in December 2021. Now on international news. United States Treasury Secretary Jeanette Yellen has announced that Washington will deepen its ties with African nations as she wound up a continental tour in South Africa. Mrs. Yellen arrived after stops in Senegal and Zambia in a trip aimed at forging a new mutually beneficial economic strategy towards Africa, where countries are being aggressively quoted by Russia and China. The Secretary's visit to South Africa, the continent's most industrialized economy, came hot on the heels of a trip by Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, who was in Pretoria earlier this week. She said that Russia's brutal war against Ukraine has raised energy prices and exacerbated food insecurity, saying the shocks have taught them about the importance of secure and resilient supply chains. During a meeting earlier with South African Finance Minister Enoch Godongwana, Mrs. Yellen praised an energy transition partnership in which Britain, France, Germany and the EU have pledged 8.5 billion US dollars to help the country decarbonize its coal dependent economy. Now on Spot Update. A former Arsenal and Manchester City defender, Colo Torre, has been sacked by Wigan after failing to win any of his nine games in charge of the championship strugglers. Torre only agreed to a three-and-a-half-year contract at Wigan on November 29th, but his disastrous reign is already over. The Latics took just two points from Torre's seven league matches, with a 2-0 loss to Luton last weekend, leaving them bottom of the table, four points from safety. Wigan was also knocked out of the FA Cup by Luton after a replay, as the pressure mounted on Torre. He was hired to replace Lim Richardson at Wigan. Torre was in his first managerial role following assistant coaching spells with Ivory Coast, Celtics and Leicester. The 41 years old dismissal leaves Wigan looking for their fifth permanent manager in the last three years. And that's all we have a news update for today. But before we go, a recap of the major headlines. Federal Executive Council approves Nigeria Data Protection Bill for transmission to NAS. Vice President confers with Fulton and others in NIPSS transformation. KB State lawmaker resigns appointments. River State Governor says failure of 2023 elections will set democracy back. On business update, Southeastern Nigerians paid highest for kerosene in December 2022. On international scene, US to deepen ties with African countries. On sports update, Wigan sack story after just nine matches. Thanks for watching. That's all. I'm Mohammed. Have a nice day.